In our next free fall example, we're going to complicate things a little bit. So we're in our examples, we're just adding a little bit more complication each time. What we're going to do now, instead of simply dropping the object from a given height, we're actually going to throw it up from a height of 20 meters with an initial velocity of 15 meters per second in the positive direction. We're going to find time in the air before it hits the ground and what will be the final velocity when it hits the ground. All right, how do we do that? Let's start with finding the time, and typically this third equation is the right equation to use for finding time in the air. So, time in the air, question mark. So we'll use this equation, y equals y sub naught, plus v sub naught in the y direction times time, plus one half g t squared. All right, let's plug in all the numbers. We'll leave out the units to keep the equation clean. Final height, that would be zero when it hits the ground, Initial height, it starts from a height of 20 meters, uh, plus V initial in the Y direction, which is a positive 15 meters per second times the time. And of course, one half G, G being a minus 9.8, would be a minus 4.9 T squared. And sure enough, that is a quadratic equation. Now to solve quadratic equations, we like to have the square term come first, and we like that to be a positive quantity, so I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by negative one. So we get zero equals a positive 4.9 t squared, a minus 15 t, and a minus 20. Now we'll go ahead and solve that equation for t. So t is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. For those who forgot, remember that this is our a, this here is our b, and this here is our c. So let's plug those numbers in. And we get t is equal to negative b, that would be negative of a negative 15, that's positive 15, plus or minus the square root of b squared, now 15 squared is 225, minus 4, times a, which is 4.9, and times c, which is a minus 20. Notice that this minus will cancel out that minus, and then we divide the whole thing by 2a, 2a would be 9.8. All right, so now we grab a calculator. These numbers multiplied together, that would be 4 times 20 times 4.9, that's 392 plus 225. Let me write the intermediate answer down, so this is 15 plus or minus the square root of 617 divided by 9.8. Now notice this is plus or minus, so if we take the square root of um, 617, that gives me 24.8, so that would be 15 plus or minus 24.8 divided by 9.8. Now if I take the plus, the answer will become positive. If I take the minus, you can see the answer will be negative. So a positive and negative answer, you go, hmm, how can you have negative time? And again, there's a good reason for that. So let's write both, uh, both possibilities down. So we're going to add 15 to that and divide by 9.8. So that would be the positive answer. Time is equal to 4.065. Five seconds. I had a, an extra significant figure or two there. And then if we take uh, 617, take the square root of that, and make that minus, and add that to 15, and divide by 9.8, we get a minus 1.004, or t equals a minus 1.004 seconds. Now, what does that negative answer mean? Does that have any real meaning? And it actually does, because if you had thrown up the ball, from the ground so that it reached this height at a certain time then continued and finished over here you would have to throw the ball with a certain initial velocity 1.004 seconds before it gets to this point so actually that's a time that it would have been on the ground if the problem started from here rather than from there so it does have a real meaning although in this particular problem since we didn't throw it up from the ground we can just kind of ignore this answer all right so this is the correct answer then so it will take 4.065 seconds after throwing it upward at 15 meters per second from a height of 20 meters before it comes and hits the ground again. So the second question is, what will be the final velocity when it hits the ground? Well, for that, we probably need to use our first equation where it says that v final equals, uh, v final in the y direction equals v initial in the y direction plus g times t. t is not now known, 4.065 seconds. So the initial velocity is 15 meters per second, and of course g is a minus 9.8 times t being 4.065. All right, so 
4.065 times 9.8, and that's minus, plus 15 equals, and so V final in the Y direction is equal to minus 24.8 meters per second. So there's our second answer. So it takes 4.065 seconds to go all the way to the highest height and then fall back down to the ground. And when it hits the ground, it'll be going at a minus 24.8 meters per second. Now minus, of course, because it's on its way down. It's moving or traveling in a negative direction. And so that's how you find the time in the air and the final velocity for an object that's thrown up first from a height of 20 meters.